at Howard's Branch, which is a project that's about 10 years old. It's a, a sand seepage wetland stream complex. And I'm standing here with Ron and, and Kevin and Keith. Ron, uh, this is the first project that the county uh, was involved in of, of this sort and type. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the, the background on the project. Okay, you know, you're correct. This is uh, an entirely new technique uh, that um, was first introduced to us uh, a little over 10 years ago, I guess, over to 12 years ago. Um, and the origin of the project itself, um, the valley floor here actually was uh, part of a reservoir of water um, for a uh, water production facility. It's a little, uh, a little further downstream here that was serving the one community up to our left. Um, and what had transpired over the years is the dam structure for the reservoir itself uh, had deteriorated and a fairly significant storm event, uh, downpour of, uh, of rain, uh, overwhelmed that dam structure and it was a catastrophic failure. The wa wall of water then uh, washed its way down to the, the tidal, uh, tidal waters down below. Um, but what was left behind um, was um, this valley floor that was pretty much uh, filled uh, over many years uh, with the uh, sediment that uh, transported uh, in, in behind the dam structure itself. Um, and after the, the dam failure itself, the sediments were progressively being moved out of the valley floor uh, on downstream. It was cutting a channel that was meandering through those legacy sediments and transferring a lot of material downstream. Um, yeah, at that time, there were uh, Keith Underwood, the, the innovator behind the technique that was uh, deployed here, and a number of other residents in the communities that uh, are nearby here um, had been advocating for this new technique that, that Keith had uh, come up with relative to how to restore these kinds of uh, degraded systems. And that uh, basically led to our first journey as it relates to uh, creation of a wetland of this nature. So Keith, we're, we're standing on a wetland complex. What's the significance of this within kind of the history of the, the area? From a biologic standpoint, uh, I have always had strong interest in plants and then led to rare plants. Uh, 1996, a colleague, uh, Phil Sheridan and myself, conducted a, um, a survey, a biological survey, of all the remaining Atlantic white cedar uh, remaining west of the Chesapeake Bay. Um, the trees that you see around here are associated with numerous other rarities, the pitcher plants, the sundews, the carnivorous plants, the bog orchids. In fact, the vast majority of our rare, threatened, and endangered species um, uh, for this area here. So uh, we began efforts to uh, look for opportunities to restore those organisms. Uh, what we found in that inventory was 1,214 live individuals above a meter in height in, on 10 sites here. And that set off the alarm bells that we really needed to begin restoration sites. So uh, particular to the Atlantic white cedar kind of complex. Well, so everything that we're looking at here has been um, put in and built up and kind of capped over the existing mill pond sediment right. too. So all, the, all this has been planted and to restore that kind of environment. Well, we initially pursued opportunities to restore the degrading natural sites, and it was clear that we were not going to get permits for that. So um, we began efforts to find, to locate opportunities to synthesize the conditions to, you know, create these backup populations on degraded sites. And um, um, this was the site selected for a number of reasons. So Kevin, we can hear the frogs in the background as we're talking. Um, so this is, it really has a lot of habitat uh, potential as it, the water has been spread out into these different uh, wetland environments. Do you want to say a little more about? Well, it's it's that? quite different here than it than it was uh, you know 12 years ago when this was first proposed. And at that time, it was just a single thread channel moving through these unconsolidated sediments with uh, very little habitat value. We, did a fish uh, shock the stream for fish and found no fish in there, some frogs and some eels um, at that time. So very little habitat value at that time. The uh, floodplain was mostly rice cut grass with some red maples coming up. Uh, today you look at it and, and you, you see you know a vast difference in the complexity of the habitat and the species that are out here. And uh, as I said earlier, we saw, you know, we've already identified three three species of frogs already and just today and the wood ducks that are here and, and then the fish that are in the stream and, and all the variety of plants that exist out here and some of them uh, very rare. So uh, quite a big difference 
from what it was 12 years ago. And I imagine there's a lot of maintenance involved in the still that we don't really see currently, but it, a lot of community involvement in uh, taking care of invasive. Do you have problems with invasive species coming in down here, or is it? No, this site is essentially self manning at it? this point in time, yes. As you look around, the vast majority of the cedar that you see here uh, back behind us are, it's, uh, is recruitment from natural mm. rainfall. Uh, you know, the uh, cedars were planted here as a seed source. We buck the um, conventional uh, U.S. Forest for, um, uh, Service approach to attempting to restore cedar stands uh, simply because there wasn't enough material remaining. We devised a method to get the trees up in a nursery operation large enough to provide their own seed rain and begin colonizing the site, um, uh, you know, on its own volition here. Mm -hmm.